Well, we're going to start day 17 with a little inside baseball. I started recording this voiceover, and I was maybe two or three minutes in, and suddenly uh, my Adobe Premiere, which I edit this on, popped up and said, do you want to save changes? And I had never even touched anything. And then literally, as I was staring at the screen, it shut down, and uh, it didn't save the commentary that I'd recorded so far. But... I'd only done a couple minutes, so let's jump in. Now, when I did this commentary the first time, I was speculating as to when people watch this, if you're watching this, are you binging it? Are you watching one after another because it's just so exciting, like a good Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or something show, or Disney Plus? Or are you watching it once a day like it's been written or... Are you watching it once every never? And the reason I say that is because on day 16, I was like on page 7, and here I am on, on day 17, and I've jumped ahead to page 28. And frankly, because I'm recording this voiceover so long after I did the writing, it's really hard to remember my thought pattern. So here we are, beginning of Act 2. Holly is left, and Rachel and Lexi and Larry are in there with the two U.S. Marshals. Now, I'm pretty sure the reason I'm writing and rewriting this scene is because what I was wondering was, would Holly leave without seeing Rachel? What would be the dynamics if she did? You know, would they have a conversation? Would Holly go in sort of in advance and say, look, you better not screw this up, blah, blah, blah. That didn't really seem right. Would Holly not want to see her at all? Would they want to see each other and not say anything? So, um, and how would that obviously affect both the logic and the character dynamics and that sort of thing? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I think I'm figuring out how that's going to work. And Holly, again, is reassuring there in the dialogue, you have to know I wouldn't have done this if I thought you'd be in any danger. And so, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading instead of talking, which is probably better. I'm just wondering... As I'm writing this, I'm thinking, does Holly want to see Rachel and vice versa? All right, so there we go. There we go. Okay, so top of page 28, Holly catches a glimpse of Rachel standing across the room looking right at her. Rachel offers up a nod that mixes thanks with get lost. All right, so I like that a lot, as I recall. Ah, the sun is shining for the first time in three days. And now it's just gone under. Um, so I, I, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Because I, I don't think they need to say anything. And I think I'm going to go back and tweak that um, for reasons that you'll see if you keep watching. So one thing I realize here is that I'm describing Rachel in this scene in the treehouse loft cabin but we've seen her in the scene before so I'm probably going to go back and have to fix that up and and so Rachel's line about your aunt she took good care of you that acknowledges that maybe Rachel has, because she's seen Holly she's having lingering thoughts about Holly and about the whole situation okay so now here we are back on page eight. Oh my gosh so I don't know if this happens to everyone else who writes, um, but you, you write new dialogue and you go, oh, either I've got to go back and change something or this isn't going to work. So here we are back on page eight. This is interesting because it's <laughs> watching it back at this. It's, it's at once frustrating for me giving the commentary and then interesting to go, what is your thought process while writing and it's, it is crazy, isn't it? So maybe what I did is I jumped ahead based on the dialogue that I wrote on page 8. Jumped ahead to make some changes on that page 28, 29, whatever. And now I'm coming back in my continued reworking of the beginning. 
So she's dropped the bomb about her mom. She's dropped the bomb right here about, I'm not your aunt, I'm a U.S. Marshal. And before she kind of beat around the bush about that, but then I thought, well, that would be interesting. And then, you know, Lexi mind is going a million miles an hour and she realizes from, you know, watching movies and whatever that, oh my gosh, holy, you know what, I'm in the witness protection program. And then I thought it would be interesting if Holly kind of deflects that by giving her the real name of it, which I learned when I was doing my research. WITSEC, which is kind of a cool, abbreviate, not really abbreviation, but an acronym, I guess. <laughs> There's one more thing. And so this, this introduces the idea, um, the prelude, prelude to it, where Lexi is going to tell her, her big news, that she's going on this weekend trip. And now I appear to have left the computer, or I'm just doing a lot of thinking, because nothing is changing here. Oh, all right, there we go. So, yeah, sometimes, as I say, when I go away from the computer for more than a few minutes, I'll just turn off the screen recording. But sometimes I'm just sitting there thinking. Imagine that. Okay. And then that th well, all good thing comes in threes. I... I don't know. I don't know that a teenager would say that. So I got rid of that. Just changed the no thanks. She starts off and then Holly gets more firm. Okay. Oh, I do like this dialogue. <laughs> yes. Pat myself on the back. You're perfectly safe. That's not changing. Lexi, being kind of paranoid at this point, is immediately like, okay, well, something else is changing then. And then I say Holly equals busted. But again, how do you, do you have to convey that or will it be obvious? That's always a question I have. How much of that do you write into it? And I do still think I have a tendency to over sort of direct because if I was directing this, I would probably know the the visual cues, probably the actors would too, but I think it does help to get this on paper at least at least for now. And then this whole thing that um Holly has known all along. However, we don't really know I don't know how she knows. Does she have Lexi's cell phone tapped or exactly what? But she does and I think it it's okay the way Holly just sort of spews it out. And again, it's a way to give exposition, but in kind of an unconventional way, because Lexi's just, like I wrote, sitting there with her mouth hanging open. Because I did think, um, would, would the other parents agree to this weekend getaway with these, you know, still teenagers, early 20 kids without any adult supervision? Maybe they would. Um, but I thought that would be interesting. The other thing that made me, that makes me think is that later on, would they get in touch with their parents to let them know what was going on or not? And I, I kind of mentioned that in the script, but then I think I got rid of it. So I'll have to think about that. You always wonder how, you know, movies are not realistic unless they're a documentary. And even then they're not necessarily realistic. So how tied to reality do you have to make this? Because if someone reads this and go, well, my daughter would never do that or she would call me right away. But does it help the story for that to happen? Or do you want the audience to go, hey, they should, they should really call their parents. They should really call their parents. OK. Anyways, back to the script. Uh, <laughs> Lexi's line, I need to get a few things out of my suitcase. Um, kind of a, not a turn of phrase, but just a way to, because you can get in just endless back and forth, back and forth, but you've got to end the scene. So I found that kind of non sequiturs are a good way to do that. And it also reveals a little of what maybe she had in mind. 
And then I did this this part on page 12 about I'd like to meet the genius who decided a clock striking midnight makes you an adult. Because when you think about that, you know, you turn 18 and you've got all these legal rights. But in truth, you're a second, you know, you're a split second older than you were before the clock struck midnight. You know, does one minute, one day, one hour give you that maturity? Obviously, it doesn't. So I thought that was kind of an interesting bit there. And I may have not commented on that earlier. Well, this day is in the can. It was about a little less than an hour of actual writing, so about 10 or 12 minutes of commentary. Um, it'll be interesting to see if I keep um, skipping back and forth or just going day by day. And we'll all find out tomorrow on a screenwriter's journey.